Okay, hi. Um, so today's video, we are going to talk about what Mendel discovered specifically. So he did thousands of experiments on pea plants and he applied math to his findings and he discovered three things in the end. Okay, so the three things that Mendel discovered. Discovered after doing thousands of experiments on pea plants. Okay, so here they are. I'm gonna give you a list. The first thing that he figured out was that there are different versions of every gene, okay? He called them heritable factors. We now know that they're genes, and for every gene, there are different versions of that gene, okay? So there are different versions of genes. Okay, we call that alleles. Okay, those versions are called alleles. That's an important word. Um, so I'm going to underline it. Alleles. And so just to give you an example of an allele, um, let's say a gene, there is a gene for eye color. So example is a gene for eye color. Okay, the different alleles for that gene are brown eyes or blue eyes or green eyes and so on. Okay, so a gene is a trait and then there are different alleles for every trait. Okay, and so Mendel figured that out. So for example, flower color was one gene and there are different alleles for that gene. There is a purple allele and there's a white allele. Okay, the second thing is that he said that every individual has two alleles for every gene. So every individual has two alleles for every gene. Okay, and this is true. For every single gene that we have as humans, there are two alleles for every gene. And that is because we get one allele from your mom and one allele from your dad for every gene, okay? So every gene you have, you have two versions of that gene. If both alleles are the same, we call that homozygous. Homozygous means both alleles are the same. If both alleles are different, we call that heterozygous. That means both alleles are different. Okay. That's number two. The last thing is that with alleles, there is one allele that is dominant, one version that is dominant, and one version that is recessive. Okay. So one version of a gene is dominant, and one version is recessive. Okay. Sometimes there are more than one dominant one, just so you know, but for now we're just sticking to two alleles, one dominant, one recessive. And when we're talking about them, like when we're talking about a gene, for example, um, we designate a capital letter for the dominant allele and a lowercase version of that letter for the recessive allele. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick to eye color. Um, and so eye color, and I'm gonna say that brown eyes are dominant. And so we're gonna say that brown dominant, the dominant allele for eye color is brown, and we're gonna call it big B. Blue eyes is recessive. And we're gonna say that blue eyes is little b. Okay, so we're just gonna show the dominant allele as capital letter B, the recessive allele as lowercase b. Okay, so because of, there are two and everybody has two alleles for every gene, for the eye color gene in one individual, there are three options. One option is that they can be homozygous dominant, which means they have two dominant alleles. This is called homozygous dominant. And if you have a dominant allele as one of your two, you will express that dominant trait. 
So this person will have brown eyes, okay? The second option is big B, little b. This is heterozygous because both alleles are different. Because there is a dominant trait in there, the big B, this person has brown eyes, okay? And the last option is little b, little b. And this is homozygous recessive. And because there is no dominant allele around, only two recessive alleles, this individual has blue eyes, okay? So you only see the recessive trait if both alleles are recessive. Okay, the last thing that I want to point out um, is that when you're talking about the genes or and the two alleles, that is called a genotype. Genotype is the two alleles. Okay, so in our case, it is the two letters, the B, two Bs. Okay, so big B, little b, or big B, big B, or little b, little b. Okay, so for example, big B, little b is the genotype. This represents the DNA for that person, okay? That person has two genes, one from mom, one from dad. One is a gene for the big B, which is the brown eyes. One is a gene for the little b, which is the blue eyes, okay? The phenotype is what you actually see. It's the trait that you see. So you actually see the brown eyes. Okay, so when you're doing problems, genetic problems, commonly they will ask you for what is the chances of having, you know, a certain trait. And it's asking for the chances or in the genotype chances and the phenotype chances. Okay. Um, so let's do a problem. Let's do an example problem. Okay. So let's say that you have, we're just going to stick with the eye color because that's what I've been using. Let's say that we have a dad that has blue eyes and a mom that has brown eyes. And this couple just got married, they're gonna have children, and they wanna know what are the chances that our children are gonna have brown eyes or blue eyes, okay? So first I wanna tell you that there are two tools we use to answer questions. The first one is called a Punnett square. You might've heard of this before. A Punnett square is used to figure out the probability of what an offspring could get. So a Punnett square, is used to figure out a probability of what an offspring will get for its traits, okay? And basically, a Punnett square is looking at the mom's alleles, the dad's alleles, finding out all the possible combinations of those alleles, and, and then giving you a probability, okay? Like it's more often you'll have this trait versus this trait, for example. Okay, the second type of tool that we use to answer these questions are called pedigrees. Pedigree. And a pedigree is used when you want to look at the overall pattern of a family. It's used to look at the overall pattern of a family okay, that already exists. So you use a Punnett square when you don't have children yet, but you want to know what are the chances for my children. But a pedigree is used when you already have children and you already know what everybody's traits are, okay? So I'm gonna do an example, and then you're gonna have a couple of questions, but you're gonna, for the lab this week, you're gonna do lots of practice problems, okay? So let's just do one example. Let's say that we have a dad who has blue eyes. Example is a man has blue eyes, okay? And I'm gonna say that he is, um, heterozygous, okay, so what that means is he's big B, little b, marries a woman with brown eyes. I'm sorry, if he has blue eyes, he's homozygous recessive. I'm sorry, I messed up right there. Homo, homozygous recessive. Okay, so little b, little b is the man's genotype. Marries a woman with brown eyes and she is heterozygous, heterozygous.
okay, which is big B, little b, okay? So that's what I'm saying. This is the problem. And so what are the chances that their kids are gonna have brown and blue eyes? What are the chances for the child to have, let's say, brown eyes? Okay, so that's what they're asking. This is how you would set up that problem. So you have the, the man, he is big B, little, I'm sorry, little B, little B. And you cross it with a woman who is big B, little B. Okay, so here's the cross and you wanna know what the children are. What are the chances for a child? And so what you do is a, a Punnett square because you don't have the children yet. Okay, so we're gonna set up a Punnett square like this. This is how you do it. Okay, so you put one of the parents on the top. It doesn't matter which one, as long as one of them goes on the top here and the other one goes on the side. Okay, so what you're doing is you're splitting up the different alleles and you're combining them in all possible combinations. This is how meiosis works, right? You have a cell that gets split twice and so you only have one allele per cell and then the two gametes, the sperm and the egg, come together to bring together two alleles again. Okay, so in this, what you do is you bring this B down here, this B over here. So I'm gonna say it's big B, little B. And in here, it's gonna be big B, little B. And in this box, we're gonna have little B, little B, and little B, little B. So all this is the probability for a child. You have 25% of the children, 25% chance of big B, big B, 25% chance of big B, little B, um, which gives you a 50% chance. Okay, so we have half of them, big B, little B, and then half of them, little B, little B. So you have a 50% chance, big B, little B, which means brown eyes. Okay, and then you have a 50% chance, little b, little b, which is blue eyes. So if they were to have a child, their child has a 50-50 chance to have brown or blue eyes. Okay, okay, so um, that's it for the video. You're gonna have a couple of practice problems, but in the lab, you're gonna have a lot of practice problems, okay? Okay, have a good one, and I will see you next time.